Alan Johnson of the Greensboro News and Records wrote an article, memo to the black ministers who are endorsing this state's divisive new bathroom law. By the way, Alan Johnson is, I know that, so take what he has to say with a grain of salt. He's got a memo, and this is to the black preachers who endorse HB2. The KKK is in your corner. Turns out, the Klan believes that men ought to use the men's room. <laughs> and women ought to use the, uh, the, the ladies' room. I mean, who knew? <laughs> An organization as wicked and as backwards and as godless as the Ku Klux Klan, an organization that has blood on its hands, or an organization like the Klan, marauders, made up of cowards who would ride through the black community with masks on. And they didn't stop, you know when they stopped marauding our community? They rode through one night and shot, and the black man shot back. All of a sudden, when they found out we had guns, they saw the light. They saw. That's what happened. Guns. That's what happened. Really, that's what got them. So next time you talk, we need to get rid of guns. Guns got rid of the Klan. Amen. So now the Klan, here's what the Klan said. Quote, these freaks are jeopardizing the safety of bathrooms for our women and children across the nation. All right, boys, stand here. I got to make a tape. See, let me tell you, when they come after you, you can't get scared. You have to double down. Now, the Alan Johnson, we're going to put this on YouTube, y'all pass it. Alan, praise the Lord, uh, and the Greensboro News and Records. All right, this is a blog. It seemed like a rag to me. But Alan, in your column... Memo to the black ministers who are endorsing the state's divisive new bathroom law. The KKK is in your corner. All I can say, Alan, is that a broken watch is right twice a day. <laughs> Apparently, when it comes to going to the bathroom... The Klan is wiser than North Carolina's NAACP. <laughs> Hallelujah. Now the reason I said North Carolina's is that I have bishop friends and preacher friends who are part of the NAACP in other states and they are fighting tooth and nail against such laws. So we ain't going to endorse the whole, in, uh, we're not going to speak of the, all of the NAACP. It's just North Carolina. Now, the man mentions me in the article. He says, uh, for their part, the pro-HB2 black preachers, or, or preachers, went on to repeat the NC Value Coalition's talking points, uh, chapter and verse, and they also had a sharp, had sharp words for NAACP President William Barber. Here's the quote. Reverend Barber does not speak for us. It's in the quote, Bishop Patrick Wooden said. Two things, Alan. Number one, uh, I, if, if they had talking points that day, they never showed them to me. The only talking point I spoke from was this one. The Bible. Number two, tell the whole story. Be an honest journalist for once in your life. When we, had, when we did the, the rally, a news reporter asked, said, you know Reverend Bob is going to have something to say about this. You know he's going to respond. What do you have to say about Reverend Barber? Now, what I should have said, number one is, I'm grown. 
I'm grown. I'm a grown. I'm 54. I'm a grown man. I don't have to get anybody's permission to say anything. I'm grown. You don't ask no an adult. What about this? What about that? I'm grown. Grown. I have children and grandchildren. I pastor a church. I have employees. I went to school. I'm grown. But my answer was, with all due respect to Reverend Barber and the NAACP, what I said was, uh, Reverend Barber does not speak for me, nor do I speak for him. That's what I said. They left that part off. I guess you need to do something to sell papers. But, for the record, if you think trying to keep this man, look at that messed up neck, this man out of the ladies' bathroom, you say that this is the new Jim Crow. Look at these black men being hung on the Jim Crow law. Look at all these white folks smiling. Nobody went to jail. Look at this bus with all these empty seats. But at the back it's crowded with black folks standing. Because blacks couldn't sit at the front under Jim Crow. He made woman of the year. I wonder if he made with all these whips on his back. Man of the year. Look at, look at this. He can go in any restroom he wants to. Amen. But here, the colored, look at the colored water fountain, a mess and filthy, and look at the brand new white one. And that black man had to drink out of this dirty water fountain because he knew he could not walk over here. Now, it's, there's only one pipe. The pipe is one pipe that connects both fountains. One pipe. But the white man's fountain had to be modern and clean. And the black man's fountain had to be a fountain of antiquity and dirty. Now, if you believe that fighting against this is the new Jim Crow, then there's something wrong with you. They have called this, this fight the new Jim Crow. Under Jim Crow, a black man could not cut a white woman's hair. Under Jim Crow, a black, black folk couldn't, could not dedicate a baseball field within two blocks, two to three blocks of a white baseball field. Under Jim Crow, if the circus came to town, they had to have two lines because whites and blacks couldn't go in the same line. Under Jim Crow, black people were dehumanized. We were treated like chattel. We were, we were not considered as humans. Human. This was an ugly time in our history. I got a question. When, how many transgenders, uh, Alan, have been hung? How many people say to this man who made Man of the Year and got the ESPY Award? The ESPY Award ain't nothing. Who is, is nothing? Who have tried to hit him, fight it? You know what he got? He got a TV show out the deal and millions of dollars. Blacks didn't get this. Oh no, this is not, fighting this is not the new Jim Crow. This is, uh, shame on you Loretta Lynch for saying, for using Jim Crow and this fight in the same sentence. This man should not be allowed in a woman's restroom. And ladies, if you are married to a man who think that this man should be able to go in there when you are in private behind closed doors doing your business uh, in a vulnerable position, if your man agrees with that, you need to check your man because there's something wrong with your man. Because a natural man, a natural man ain't going to stand for no stuff like that. Praise the Lord. So... Johnson, not you, praise the Lord, not the readers of this paper, not anybody tells me what I can and con cannot say. That was a time, African Americans, I said at this press conference, we are not a monolithic group. 
we are allowed to think for ourselves. And my mind tells me, based on this book, that men should go to the men's room. And women to the women's room. <laughs>